welcome back to Cruising As Crew. My name is Lucy and today I'm going to be going through some things that I think you need to know about your cabin before you start working on a cruise ship. But before we start, please press like and subscribe for more cruise ship content. And if you have any video suggestions, you can leave them down in the comments below or you can DM me over on Instagram at Cruising As Crew and I will be sure to get back to you. But as for now, let's get into this video. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you will know that I have talked about your cabin on a cruise ship in the past but I don't think I've made a video dedicated to information about your cabin and I thought it needed to be done because when you get on board a cruise ship that is one of the biggest shocks you will have I think you know the fact that you're living with someone they're probably going to be from a different country probably going to have a different first language to you different culture different religion maybe and it's a very small space to share with someone you know it's not like sharing an apartment with someone you have a whole apartment to share you are literally sharing a room with a stranger it can be quite tough so just to make things a little bit easier I just wanted to go through a few things that you should know before you get on board so you're more prepared so stick around if you find this video helpful please give it a like and subscribe and yeah let's get into the things that you need to know about your cabin on board a cruise ship so the first thing the walls are magnetic whatever ship you go on it's a ship so the walls are going to be magnetic if you've been watching my videos you know that i collect magnets from every port that i go to but i always take some magnets with from like wilco's or something just so i can stick pictures of my family and friends on the wall because it just like reminds me of home but also you know if you're at work and they give you your rotor they give you your schedule it's nice to just be able to pin that up on the wall or magnet that up on the wall all the cabins on board cruise ships if you are sharing a cabin will have bunk beds and usually when you get on board there will already be someone in the cabin people usually choose to have bottom bunk so when you first get on board you probably will have top bunk but just in case you get on board and your cabin is empty and maybe you're joining with someone on the same day or the person you're going to be sharing with is joining a week later and you get there first the reason people choose bottom bunk is obviously it's easily accessible but also the top bunk is never high enough for you to sit up in bed i mean it's not like a coffin it has a little bit of space but unless you're four foot you're not going to be able to sit up in bed so it's nice if you're on bottom bunk because you can sit up in bed read a book watch telly you don't have to lie down in bed because of that the bottom bunk becomes a sofa if you like so if you have friends over other crew members over or even if it's just you two in the cabin but you want to sit down you usually sit on the bottom bunk because it's the only you know unless you have a chair in your cabin some cabins do some cabins don't you'll sit on the bottom bunk so if you are funny about people sitting on your bed then maybe you want to go for the top bunk because if you have the bottom bunk people will be sitting on your bed maybe it'll just be your roommate maybe it'll be you know people that you invite back or people your roommate invites back but nevertheless that is something to be aware of another one for bunk beds bunk beds will have curtains on so when you close the curtains you can have a little bit of privacy I mean it's not much it is just a curtain but you know if you don't want your roommate to be able to see you sleeping then you can close your curtains no matter what ship you go on no matter what type of cabin you stay in there will be a tv in your cabin so what i suggest is that you get a hard drive and you fill it with films even if you just get um a hard drive before you go on board there is going to be probably multiple people on board who have all the films already on their hard drive so you can just ask them you know to borrow their hard drive and just transfer them all over to yours and that way you can plug your hard drive into the back of the tv and watch whatever film you have on your hard drive because there is a crew channel and they do put films on but obviously if they're running james bond for a week and you don't want to watch james bond then it's good to have the option of watching something else and you can't really take a whole load of dvds with you because space is limited so yeah the best thing to do is get a hard drive and when you get on board find someone to steal a load of films off so i think i've got about like 300 films on here now after being on cruise ships for five years so um yeah get a hard drive 
cleaning your cabin. So every two weeks, it does vary from ship to ship, but usually it's every two weeks, there will be crew rounds where certain officers are gonna come around and inspect your cabin to make sure it is clean tidy but the main thing is clean so the night before crew rounds it's always a mad rush everyone's trying to clean their cabin but there are certain things that you know you have to do and you're not allowed to do so vacuuming everyone usually uses the vacuum within their department so like i worked in the shops we had a vacuum that we used to hoover the shops but before crew rounds or you know whenever anyone wanted it you don't have to wait till crew rounds to clean your cabin someone would take the vacuum down in the evening after work do their cabin and then usually while it was down by the cabins everyone in the shops would use that vacuum to hoover their cabins and then in the morning the unlucky person who got the vacuum last would have to take it back up to the shops so i imagine it's the same for every department you know in the spa we use the vacuum that was in the spa restaurants i don't know how it would work for restaurants really because there's so many restaurant staff I don't know but anyway so you get the vacuum from your department and then there are certain cleaning products that you are allowed to use so it's virox and oxivia i hope i said that right they are the ones that are provided by the ship and those are the ones that you have to use obviously every cleaning product you use ends up in the ocean so they are trying to use the best products they can for the ocean the most ocean friendly products but there will be a virux and oxivia station somewhere on the ship so what i always do when i get on board if my roommate hasn't already is you can go down to the virux and oxivia station and just pick up a spray bottle of virux and oxivia and a cleaning cloth and you can just like keep them in your bathroom so that every time you want to clean your cabin and your bathroom you don't have to go down to the station and get the products. You know, it's nice just to have it in your cabin. Don't go buying any bleach or anything from the supermarkets because when you bring it back on board, it will be confiscated because it'll end up in the ocean. So you have to use the products that the ship provides, but you can usually get them like around the clock. You know, you can go to the cleaning station 24 hours a day. So if you wake up at three in the morning and decide you wanna clean your cabin, you can do that, no problem. If you share a cabin, you are gonna have a double wardrobe in the cabin and you and your roommate will both have one side of the wardrobe each. If you go on a new ship, the new ship's probably going to provide maybe 10 coat hangers. I don't know about you, but I've definitely got more than 10 things that I need to hang up. And if you go on an older ship, you're probably going to have loads of coat hangers, but they're going to be, you know, like the shitty metal wire ones that really aren't great. They're all misshapen and you can tell that they've been on that ship for the last two decades. When your roommate leaves, you probably have like two or three hours before the new person comes. You're going to claim the bottom bunk. You're going to take all of their good coat hangers for yourself. If you're nice, you'll leave some for the new roommate. You're going to claim the drawers that you want. So when you do move into the cabin, you're going to be left with some shitty coat hangers or no coat hangers. So packing space is going to be limited, but if you can by any chance, fit in some coat hangers, take some. I always take some and people always make fun of me for doing it, but you know what? I don't have to iron my stuff because I can hang it all up. If you do have room in your suitcase, take some spare hangers. It's obviously not essential. If you can't fit it in, you'll be fine. You can get some in port, but if you do have some space, that's what I would say to pack. So again, with storage, your cabin is gonna be really, really small. You're gonna have one half of the wardrobe and you're probably gonna have maybe three or four drawers. There isn't gonna be a lot of room for your shoes other than, you know, the bottom of your wardrobe. You're probably going to take with you your work shoes, steel toe cap boots, flip flops, trainers, maybe some tennis shoes and a pair of dress shoes. So maybe some heels. So that's six pairs of shoes. And then your roommate is probably gonna have her or his six pairs of shoes. So that's a lot of shoes to find space for. So what I always take with me and would never go without it is a shoe hanger. You can get them from Ikea, you hang them on the back of your cabin door and you can put all your shoes in them. In the morning when you're in a rush to get to work, you're not rummaging around looking for the other shoe, you know, it's there on the back of the door and it's not in the way. Not a lot of people take shoe racks with them even though, like I said, I absolutely wouldn't go without it, but yeah. But I actually went a lot more into detail about things that I wouldn't live without 
in another video so I'll link that and you can go and check it out. You will be sharing a bathroom with your roommate, you'll have like an ensuite cut out into your cabin which has a lovely shower but also a shower curtain. They're the worst things ever. They just, when you're showering they just stick to you, they get in the way, you get all tangled up in the curtain. So going back to taking magnets with you, yes you can stick pictures to the wall but also I take four um, like really strong magnets. When you're in the shower you can magnet the curtain to the wall. So, you know, one up, one below, and then close the curtain and magnet it to the wall. And that way it stays in position and it doesn't stick to you while you're showering. Really minor, but it makes a difference because you don't want to kill yourself every time you get in the shower and get messed up with the curtain. The bed sheets that the ship provide are not fitted sheets, they are, they're loose. Hello sheets? Hotel sheets? I don't actually know what the name is. I always take a fitted sheet. I wish that I could make beds like the housekeeping staff do. They make them so beautifully and you know they are able to tuck the sheets in so it's really tight. I can't do that so I always just take a fitted sheet with me because it's just easier. Otherwise I end up spending about 20 minutes trying to make my bed. Now if you do take your own bedding you will have to wash it yourself whereas if you use the bedding that the ship provides you can literally just chuck it in the laundry and get new bedding but for me it's worth it. I'd just rather wash my own bedding and have a fitted sheet than have to wrestle with a loose sheet. And also I quite like washing my own bedding like, no, not that there's anything wrong with the ship's laundry, it's perfectly fine, but I think it's just, it's a bit of an OCD thing, I just like to know that I've washed my bedding and I also like it to smell how I want it to smell, you know, I wash it with the laundry detergent that I like the smell of, so, anyway, it doesn't matter, but take a fitted sheet, it'll make your life so much easier. So in your cabin there is going to be room for your suitcase usually between the bunk beds and like the wardrobe or the desk there'll be two gaps that are like suitcase sized which means there's enough room for two hard cases in a cabin there's not room for four hard cases so my point is if you and your roommate both take two hard cases that don't slot into each other you're just gonna have suitcases everywhere so I would recommend taking one hard case and a soft case which is what I do or take you know two or three hard cases but the ones that you can get like the the three cases that fit into each other um, they're the best they're quite pricey but if you want to splurge on suitcases my friend did that before she took two hard cases and it wasn't a problem until her new roommate came and actually bought three hard cases that didn't fit into each other so they just had like an abundance of suitcases and as you know cabins are tiny anyway so I think they ended up having to get them stored somewhere else because they were like I can't live like this like I can't get to the bathroom because there's suitcases in the way make sure you get a soft case or the cases that fit into each other to maximize space just realized I've told you to pack like a shoe rack, coat hangers, magnets, so you do actually need space to pack your clothes as well. But anyway guys, I really hope you have enjoyed this video, I hope you found the tips helpful. If you have, please press like and subscribe, and if you have any video suggestions you can leave them in the comments down below, or you can DM me over on Instagram at cruisingascrew. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video guys, bye!